hello beautiful people welcome back to my youtube channel good morning good afternoon good evening and also want to thank my subscribers and my viewers and those of you that are here to subscribe please um, subscribe to my youtube channel thank you so much so um today i want to discuss something so important and so vital and i will appreciate it if you watch this video to the end so that you will get the information i'm about to pass on today's um channel um, the ex-wife of Oni of Ife, the ex-Olori Zainab Rola, we heard some things about her that um, dissolved the, her marriage with the Oni of Ife. But she was not given the chance or she, was, she has not said anything about the dissolution of the marriage ever since she left the palace. And now, in an interview, she opened up and gave some vital points on why she left the marriage. I will talk about what she said, and I will also talk about something else. So that is why I urge you all to please watch this video to the end, because it is a very vital one. So... A close source has revealed the real reason Olori Wurola voluntarily packed out of the palace. She packed out on her own. Nobody sent her out. But the news we were hearing before was that she was sent out of the palace because of infidelity. The palace is otherwise known as the house of Odudua. It is said that the S queen was victimized by some of the Oni's family members due largely to the fact that she is not Yoruba and because they wanted to turn her to their slave. She, however, bore the pain silently because she not only loved her husband but respected the institution of marriage. Contrary to the insinuation that she couldn't stand the sight of another woman sharing the bed with her husband, but she was aware of the Yoruba tradition that a king is allowed to marry more than one wife. It was part of the orientation that was given before marriage. She felt so bad that she has to share her husband with another woman. As a woman being, we have to feel that way. But she also was reminded that when she was given the orientation before marrying the king, she was told that the king has right to marry as many wives as he wants. So, but that was not the issue according to her. It was part of the orientation given to her before she married the man, the king. But the ploy to bring her down and relegate her her marriage is what she can stand. And also, the allegation of infidelity against the then Olori was said to be false. According to the Yoruba uh, cosmology and, and uh, belief, when a king is named is married to an Olori, nobody else dares sleep with the Olori. That is the repercussion. But if Olori is truly promiscuous. Why is she still alive and doing well for herself? And why is it that none of the men who had allegedly slept with her died? It was widely known that before Oba Adeyeye married the Olori Wurola, he has chased away two women in his life. This shows that the problem is not from Olori Wurola, uh, but from Kabiesi himself. It is also gathered that Queen Wurola had all this while been suffering in silence. She was said to have been abandoned most of the time by the king. In fact, she never enjoyed the marriage for a day. She kept wondering what led her into the marriage in the first place. It was that terrible that... Another thing is that Queen 
Urola was a millionaire before she married the king and has supported the king in so many ways. Also, it was learned that the only sister were the architect of the disaffection the only has for Olori Urola. The sisters, princesses, um, Fola Shade, they like they don't like to be called princess, they like to go with the name Ye Ye One, Ye Ye Two, and Ye Ye Three. So their names are Fola Shade, Ade Shola, and Ade Binkbe. They encourage their brother to take another wife. They never liked the ex queen Zainab Urola from the first day she stepped into the palace. And they did not pretend about it. It is also gathered that none of these three sisters has been in a blissful marriage. Princess Fola Shade is married to an American returnee who has a wife and kids in the U.S. The second princess, Adeshola, broke up with her pastor husband for unpublished reason. And the third princess, at 40, also left her husband. Dawudu, who still work in the Ornis Palace. They, re they rely on their brother for survival. So when I came across this um, interview that um, Queen Zainab Wurola made, I started comparing some facts with the fate that Queen Naomi went through. Because they it was said, the accusation was that Queen Wurola was cheating on the Oni. That was why she was sent out of the palace. But she willingly left the palace on her own. And if we look at the pictures of Queen Wurola with the Oni, she never smiled. She always wear this sad and long face. The same thing with Queen Naomi. Queen Naomi always wear this sad, pretending to smile face. The three sisters of the Oni have sworn that their brother will not marry somebody that they did not arrange for him. And I have seen the reason why they behave like that. Because of even there as well, their marriages are in shambles. So they want their brother's marriage to spoil the way theirs has spoiled. But if you ask me, I would tell that this is total wickedness on blood. And because of they rely on the king, they cannot advise him otherwise. They only tell him what he wants to hear. But I am now saying on the other hand that the king is a learned man. He is so learned that why will he be listening to his sisters? Even a baby will know which advice is good and which advice is not good. The suffering that Queen Naomi went through in the palace is the same suffering that Queen Naomi, Queen, uh, Queen, Queen Zainab went through. Most of the time, the, the king doesn't even touch her. You don't touch your wife and you accuse her of infidelity. The last video I made was the honest father advising him. Telling him that um, if a woman leaves you, the first, the first woman left. The second woman, it did, not, it did not work out with two people. The third one, the same thing. The fourth one is the same thing. Go and check yourself. You might be the problem. Because all these women, they are, they are not in the palace at the same time. They came on different occasions. And they experienced the same thing from one person. Then that person should go and check himself. In my place, it is said that if you don't know how to tell a king the truth in his face. Like if you don't want to look at a king in the face and scold him. You wear a basket and cover your, your face so that you can be able to talk freely. The only of Ife needs to be advised. So many prophets and prophetess has intervened in his marriage. 
he is not the only king. And it was said that even before he became the king, a lot of prophecies have been seen on him. So the only should check himself and treat women right. I think he doesn't know how to treat women. There are things that women need, especially for someone like Queen Naomi that is so young, and he marries them very young. There are some criteria he should know. There's no assurance that if he marries more wives, they will not leave him because they are, they've been coming and going. And the sisters has been engineering all these things. What the father said to him made me be believe that the problem was not with, the, with uh, Queen Naomi. And the problem was not with the other wives be, before her. The only of Ife is the problem of his marriage. And the people that are advising him are killing him. And he thinks they are saving him. The way he goes about with women is very, very wrong. He should learn how to, you know, he should know what is, what, what made the first one to leave and try to correct it with the second one. And also learn to apologize. For you to be a king does not mean that you should not treat your women the right way. Anyway, guys, I have said mine. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.